Hello and welcome back to World 360. It's been raining summits in the international arena of late. As you know, the BRIC summit was recently held in Beijing, where Russian President Vladimir Putin made his first appearance at a forum with the heads of major economies since launching an invasion into Ukraine. Earlier this week, the G7 Leaders Summit was also held in Germany. A lot of big promises were made during this summit, which was attended by US President Joe Biden, UK PM Boris Johnson and many others who are leaders of the top industrialized countries in the world. One of the promises was a $600 billion project to invest in the infrastructure of the developing world, a sort of counter to China's Belt and Road Plan. But another big promise that caught the attention of many was a very ambitious plan to put a price cap on Russian oil, but allow it to be sold to the world. The European Union, as we know, has already imposed a partial embargo on Russian crude oil and petroleum products, and EU leaders have agreed to ban 90% of Russian oil by the end of 2022. But the recent proposal from the G7 about a price cap on Russian oil is a little different. First, it's an indication that despite sanctions, Moscow is still earning a substantial revenue from oil. As the New York Times put it, the proposal for a price cap on Russian oil is an acknowledgement that Western embargoes have not yet dented Russian oil revenues while they have driven up gasoline and other fuel prices. Now let's assess the global economy for a second. Currently, Russia continues to benefit from soaring energy prices across the world amid the Ukraine war. How? Countries like China, Netherlands, Germany and Italy continue to be the largest importers of energy from Russia. Check out this graph by Finnish Think Tank, the Center for Research on Energy and Clean Air, which shows that in the first 100 days of the Ukraine war, China and these three EU countries continue to take the lead. India has also been importing a significant amount of Russian crude oil at discounted prices, mind you, joining many other countries in helping prop up Russian oil revenues. Meanwhile, high oil prices have left the West grappling with high rates of inflation. Some parts of the developing world are also seeing signs of a growing food crisis. These all appear to be ripples of the Ukraine war. So it's clear that any sort of price cap on Russian oil should be done in such a manner that it doesn't exacerbate the global economy further or create any knock-on effects. As European Council President Charles Michel put it, we want to make sure the goal is to target Russia and not to make our life more difficult and more complex. Now there's also the possibility that Russia, anticipating a price cap, could cut oil supplies sharply or make further cuts to gas exports to Europe. An Al Jazeera report also quoted a French official who said the G7 would also need to work towards getting a maximum oil price and this would require talking to the OPEC Plus or the Organization of Petroleum Exporting Countries. The OPEC is made up of Iran, Iraq, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, UAE, as well as some African nations like Algeria and Nigeria. Russia, though not a founding member of the group, is still associated with it. So in a way, talking to the OPEC Plus about a price cap on Russian oil may involve talking to Moscow itself, which makes things even more tricky. It's clear that the G7's proposal of a price cap on Russian oil is ambitious. Therefore, its implementation will be critical. From an Indian standpoint, it would be especially important to see whether such promises can reach their goal without spillover effects on developing countries that are struggling with high inflation, food and energy costs. Thank you so much for watching. This is Pia Kushankuti for The Print. Do subscribe to The Print Arena and follow us on social media.